All right, we're going to take a look at another problem here with our isosceles triangle where we've got to find the values of x and y. But in this particular drawing, we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got two triangles mushed together, and they actually they share this one side right here, that, this side that's marked as 3x squared minus 32. This side right here, that side's being shared by both triangles, so we know that that side would have the same measurement in both triangles. Then we've got another two sides of, of triangles that both deal with y's. So I've got a one side that's a 5y minus 4, another side that's a y plus 12, and a third side that's a 3x squared minus 32. So I've got all those different things going on visually in our picture. Now one of the things that I want to first look at is I'm going to take a look at uh, the triangle that's on the left. And when I take a look at this triangle, so we're going to deal with this guy right here first. One of the things that's kind of neat is I notice that two that my angles are the same, so those are going to be my base angles. Now across from the base angles then are going to be my legs. And then the legs in our right in our isosceles triangle, the legs are equal. So that means this part right here and this part right here are going to be exactly the same. Well wait a second. One of those sides is y plus twelve and another one of those sides is three x minus thirty two. But hey, if they're equal, then I can just go ahead and say, well, y plus twelve is going to be the same thing as three x squared minus 32. But I can't really solve that because I've got x's and y's and I don't have anything to really work with on that. So now what I'm going to do is kind of take a look at my other triangle see if that one can help me out at all over here. So if I take a look at the triangle on the right I notice I've got three angles that are the same. Well wow that's really helpful. If I have three angles that are the same then that means I've got three sides that are the same. So now I'm going to take a look at this other piece where I've got this part that's 5y minus 4, that means all three sides in that triangle are going to have that same value. They're all going to be 5y minus 4. But wait a second, this side that's shared right here between the two triangles, that side's got to be congruent to itself because they share it, so it's going to have the same length. So that means that 5y minus 4 is really also the same thing as this 3x squared minus 32 which is also the same thing as the y plus 12 so I can end up replacing the 3x squared minus 32 with 5y minus 4 once I do that that's gonna make things a lot easier for me so then now we're gonna just have an algebra problem where we'll have the y plus 12 and we're gonna set that equal to just 5y minus 4 because we're gonna make that substitution from here. Now this just becomes an algebra problem. I've got 5y minus 4 on one side and y plus 12 on the other. So I like to keep my variables positive so I'm going to move the y first. So I'm going to have 12 and that's going to equal 4y minus 4. And Then when I add 4 to both sides I'll get 16 for 4y. And then when you divide by 4 you end up with it a value of 4 for y. So y ends up having a value of 4. Well that's pretty cool. Now w to figure out what x is there's a couple of different ways I want to go ahead and do that but what I'm going to do to find x then is take y plus 12 and set that equal to the 3x squared minus 32. Well I know how much y is now so I can just say well 4 plus 12 equals 3x squared, oops, I forgot my x squared up there, 3x squared minus 32, so that's going to give me 16 is equal to 3x squared minus 32. When I add 32 to both sides, then we'll end up with 48 for 3x squared. Now I've got to divide both sides by 3, and that's going to give me 16. And then when I square root both sides, from an algebra perspective, I have to remember, don't forget, do plus or minus the square root. So plus or minus the square root of 16 is going to give me the value of x. Now since we're dealing with length here, I'm only going to deal with the positive square root, but in other courses, sometimes courses in Algebra 2 or, or above, you're going to need to make sure that you use both the positive or negative, but it'll be situational and depend on the context of the problem. Here in geometry, we're dealing with a positive value. So the the positive square root of 16 is just 4, so I end up with a value of 4 for x. 
Now that's a lot of work. And if you could stay with me for all of that stuff, give yourself a pat on the back because I know that's a lot of work. Now that's one way to do this problem. It's not the only way. So maybe you saw another way, but you'll use a similar technique to go ahead and find the value of x and y. All right, so hopefully that made some sense to you, and I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day now.